Our next guest on TSB is the founder and CEO of a company called Unihawk. It's a leading university admissions counselling and test preparation institute that doesn't happen just here in the UAE, but it happens right across the GCC. And it's able to both help students and their families, but also assist working adults to help if they're looking to change careers. We've spoken to so many experts about how many times people are changing careers during their lifetime. Well, I mean, uh, you can ask me. You don't need to check any experts. Yeah, you've got like six careers at last count. Well, I mean, I, I, I think by the end of uh, time, it'll be 27. Well, Varun Jan is the founder and CEO of Unitalk, and he's joining us here on TSB. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for having me here. It's great to have you in here. We're, we're talking, obviously, about the idea of higher education. Uh, but when it comes to someone who's in high school, there's so many factors that influence their decision. Yes, they have their, their passion projects, but then they do have influence of friends, of Obviously, their parents, they're looking at, oh, what's got the most adaptability? Where can I make the most money? What about job prospects? How hard is it for teenagers this day to, to, to try and work out what they should study at university? I think uh, higher education is all about uh, dreams for me. You know, when I was a kid, it was all about investing in my dreams. And I think higher education or education uh, was just a tool to, you know, kind of reach my dreams. So I think uh, all of us... Uh, as adults, what we should do is actually help children identify their dreams. And once you know your dream, then actually you work backwards and you actually identify, hey, this is what I need to do to achieve that dream. So higher education, you know, could give you exposure, like the producer of this show who actually went to university and then found found out, hey, you know what? Hang on, My- Pranav went to school? <laughs> <laughs> so, so he actually went to university to study something else and right. then he got an internship and he found out, hey, my, you know, passion is in this industry get it. and exposure helped him. Or uh, to some people, it could be, you know, building their confidence. To some people, it could be, you know, building a particular skill or for some people, just finding a job. So yeah. to me, higher education is an investment in your dreams. It's not just an investment in your degree. Now, very interestingly, you say that, you know, investing in your dreams. But then many a times at that age when you are not really sure of what you want to do, your dreams are varied. You know, at at one point in time, I wanted to become a doctor. I wanted to become an astronaut. I wanted to become a scientist. Uh, I wanted to play cricket for India. All of these things. Right. I'm not singling out. I, I, it's not that I didn't want to become an astronaut and play cricket for India. Sure. Your your dreams are varied. How do you single it out then? Well, I think that uh, comes down to, you know, I'm a parent of two. And I think I'm going to figure out how I can actually keep exposing my children, how I can actually make them feel a bit more confident of taking decisions in life, and how actually I can give them this grit that, hey, you know what, I'm not going to give up. So I think what we have to do, uh, what schools, teachers, counselors, parents have to do is expose them to different careers. Hey, I'm great in physics and math. I don't have to necessarily become an engineer, Mm -hmm. right? I can probably, you know, do an internship in an investment bank and study economics with math and use my analytical skills. But at the same time, I know somebody who probably wanted to become an astrophysicist, but at the same time, she was interested in art and she was able to pursue both of these things at the same time. So to me, taking decision of what you want to do and not worry about the outcome is an ability. It's like a soft skill that's necessary in life. And that's what actually we need to do. You know, we need to ask children to own their decisions. And that's something we can't do by being authoritative to them. Do this, do that. Mm. But actually, we need to probably command their behavior, not their psychology. Right. They, they see parents think other ways. Yeah, they, they think which, which uh, you know, education field or which, which study stream will give you a certain uh, job prospects. What, uh, you know, if, if, if it's a family of doctors, you will have to study medicine. If you're, if, if you're from a family of engineers, you will have to study engineering. Uh, you know, I, I come from a family which expected me to become a doctor. And, and you know, it's, it's not wrong to say that even I wanted to become a doctor. Why? Because I was influenced by, by their thoughts or because I was good at biology. Right. right? It, it went hand in hand. But then you still became a pharmacist. I did. I did become a pharmacist. But then did, did I, and I pursued that career as well. Right. But what am I doing today? Well, that's great. See, what helped you was the exposure. So to me, you need to take a decision today to move on. And that actually helps you reach closer to your goals and that goal of finding something. So, you know, when I was in high school, I thought I wanted to become a doctor because mm-hmm. I was told to take sciences. Yep, right? there you go. 
when I took the medical entrance exam, I got in and I was like, hey, this is not what I want to do. I'm a national level debater. I want to do something else. I want to talk to people hmm. more and more often. I ended up getting into a university with scholarships. So what helped me was a lot of research and information that uh, you know came through my teachers, my uh, you know people around me, etc. When I went to university, I started talking to other students and uh, I was able to help them get into their dream university. And I found a career as a nice. counselor, right? And then I saw these startups and then I was like, hey, my students are now starting their own company. Let me start one of my own. And that actually inspired me, right? So what helped me was exposure. So as parents, again, as I said, let us not control their psychology. Let us control their behavior, all right? And let us expose them to different career options. So I would say, you know, I will ask my daughter to come and shadow you, hmm. right? She will see what happens in this room. Yeah, not or much. I will... <laughs> <laughs> right, so let us start exposing. Let us start utilizing our friends, our uncles and aunties and go and actually expose their lives. It's all about what kind of lifestyle you want to lead yeah. and you start working backwards. Lifestyle is a part of our dream, right? True. I think they're, I think they're great messages for anyone at any age, uh, Varun. But you know, specifically in your work with Unihawk, one of the situations I work with, and I've done a lot of seminars recently where we speak about higher education, and the biggest challenge you're finding is there are so many kids that are in high school and they're going to, going to be doing jobs that haven't even been invented yet. That's right. And this is a really challenging part of... Okay, you're really talented at, at this, and you want to study this for four years at university. Uh, but how is your sector going to change? And will you then have to evolve again and then restudy later? H- how are you finding that when you're advising people? That they might it might seem like a standard procedure of I want to do this job and I want to go yeah. here, but hang on, uh, I want to go into law. But hang on, how much of law is actually going to be used in ten years' time? Right. Uh, g- given uh, the, the way that artificial intelligence or chat rooms or whatever can provide the same information. Excellent question. I think I can't answer it in one way. Probably I'll take three different Please. ways to answer yeah. this question. Number one uh, is that when you're taking a decision of sending your child to university, etc., again, start exposing them from, let's say, when they turn 12, 13, you know, give them different career options, uh, send them for different shadowing programs, online courses, etc. So they will identify what's their passion. Yeah. So you guide them through that. Now, I think to me, it's not a challenge that the world is going to change. The jobs are going to change. It's an opportunity, right? So let us prepare them. So it's a mindset change. Absolutely. It's a mindset change. Let us let us not worry. That's what we keep telling people. Let's not worry about the future. Let us worry about today. Let yeah. us prepare ourselves to deal with the change. Changes happen, you know, from childhood to teenage. We're going through, you know, our biological changes, Right. Living with parents at home to living alone in a university campus, that's a change. Picking up my first job is a change. Hating my boss is a change. Not right. That's a constant. <laughs> <laughs> that's a constant. <laughs> and leave that job and actually, you know, go all in and starting your business is a change. Success is a change and failure is a change. So yeah. I think it's all about preparing yourself for change. But coming back uh, at Unihawk, what we do is we actually try preparing students for this change while exposing them to different careers, helping them identify the right universities, colleges, and help them apply there. And then help them get into a university which gives them the flexibility of changing within the program. So you can start, you know, studying biomedical sciences and switch to business and switch to psychology and graduate as an, you know, I would say actor. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I think that's that's wise advice. But you're looking at this situation when students are sitting there and, I mean, when should they start thinking? So when you're talking about this conversation, what age is the best time? Is it is there a defined age or should it be when your your children are showing an interest in, in certain sciences that maybe it's an, or, or certain traits that maybe it's an idea they follow the, a certain path? I think uh, we all need a good mentor at different stages of our lives. So yeah. parents have to kind of become kind of a mentor to mm-hmm. guide students, to guide their children. That's very important. Yeah. But at the same time, as a student, if I have been mentored well, if I have been made aware of actually university education and different types of careers, then I would say a student should start thinking about it when they're, say, 14, 15 years old. Sure. And it's a decision of a family because a lot it at stake. You know, you're letting your child go. 
So as a parent, I need to know if my child is independent enough to go alone and live alone. That's a very important decision. Mm. As a family, uh, you know, they might have a dream of, you know, sending their kid to the US, but hey, do I have, you know, $400,000 to actually sponsor the undergraduate degree? So that's the planning they have to start in advance. But at the same time, do I need to go to the US to achieve my dreams in life? I can probably go to Europe or much cheaper place and actually do that. But still i want to go to the us uk or top university let's say a kid got into oxford today he just called me but he also wants scholarship so he started preparing 3 4 years in advance started building his profile smart smart than us yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you bet. and you know uh, he'll get scholarship and study with 100% scholarship in the university well you might yeah. notice farun that uh, neil has got uh, a drink bottle there on his uh, table and, and it's right. and it's good from a, a very fancy uh, uh, prestigious, prestigious over 400 Ivy league. years old school called Ivy league, harvard yeah. now uh, you You actually were the first to bring the Harvard Youth Lead, the YLC Change Program. You brought it to the UAE. That's right. Yeah, yes. and 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 what does that mean for anyone who's a high school student here? So after spending over uh, more than a decade actually in this region, I realized that uh, not all the kids and families have enough resources to fly down to the US and experience uh, the education, the exposure those universities offer. So we really wanted to do something to give that opportunity to students in the region across the GCC. Yep. And uh, we ended up collaborating with Harvard uh, Leadership Institute and we brought the mentors to the UAE. uh and then you know we uh asked students from all across the GCC from Saudi Arabia Kuwait Oman and the UAE uh to attend the program so to me uh uh the biggest thing was uh giving that confidence to students that hey you know what i can go and speak on the stage so during that program that's what leaders did that that's what mentors did they actually trained students to overcome that fear of actually coming up with their own idea and presenting it in front of thousands of people and actually we have eight projects right now that came out of that conference mm-hmm. and kids are actually raising money right now to implement those projects and 80% of those kids never spoke in front of i would say you know uh, more than 10 people and uh, so that was the change so for us it was more about again exposure overcoming fear and uh, many of them have started to dream to go to Harvard now this incredible is a, this is amazing you know i mean uh, you 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 we, we always talk about how important whatever we study is but at the same time or i, I would say uh, more than just the educational uh, qualification that you have your soft skills these are the skills that probably ch- take you from where you are to where you could potentially be uh, what w- what do you have to say about uh, these skills Well uh, to me a leader doesn't have to always just stand in front of a crowd of 1000 people and speak uh, you can be leader in your own way right? right so soft skills are not just about public speaking that's one of the many mm. things i think it's about being able to communicate, communicate well, yeah. what you're going through right True. it's about developing a skill of grit hey this is my dream and i'm going to fail 10 times but i'm going to just follow it right it's about accepting hey i failed it's okay i accept it i'm going to overcome this mm-hmm. it's about accepting hey i took a decision and medicine was not the right career for me or engineering was not the right career for me i'll make a career switch so these are the soft skills which actually we are trying to develop through our early year programs mm-hmm. uh and uh you know spending a lot of time with parents to tell them what they need to do they need to start believing in their children they need they... to back off sometimes <laughs> <laughs> you bet <laughs> no, i would say don't back off uh, i mean i'm a parent and yeah. i just want to go and tell my child that I trust you I really believe in you yep. and I'm okay with anything that you do but at the same time you have to do these 10 things so that you get exposed and I want to make you capable enough to take that decision that's important in yeah, your life that, that, yeah that 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 just sounded like my dad you know when when I wanted to switch careers from uh, you know uh, uh, research from uh, uh, medical research to uh, communications he said whatever you want to spend you earn save check for your future and then reinvest in yourself and i was like that right. that's a fair call that's i sound worked, advice yeah. work worked hard ensured that i was not spending randomly got my corpus ready and then he obviously helped me fund that's a little right. bit more yeah so so uh, that's very interesting because both my parents never went to college mm-hmm. right and i'm probably the first one who actually went abroad from my uh, you know entire family to study etc and i think what my d- dad did always uh, was that he showed so much of confidence and belief in me that actually gave me courage to do whatever nice. i wanted to do mm. and every time i took a very difficult decision in my life of you know quitting jobs switching countries starting something of my own he's like hey you know what don't worry 
uh, come back home if you fail and I will always support you. So to me, uh, you know, parents don't need to do anything more than just supporting their yeah. child's yeah. Yeah. To, 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 to know, it, it is an amazing thing to know that your parents are always in your corner because a couple of times I've gone to my parents for strategy advice. Probably not the right thing, but <laughs> I always had them as, I always wanted their support yeah. and I'm grateful for that. I mean, I, I'm different. I didn't finish high school. Right. And, but then... I was encouraged to go back and study later and, and did a master's later on. Sure. And a lot of it was more because I just wanted to get back to all those people that knocked me for not finishing high nice. school and then go back and end up with a higher degree than them. What an interesting point here. You actually did your master's degree after you realized how it would help you. Yep. So I think it's all about setting your expectations right before you invest in any education. It's investing in your dream. And that's what you did when you did your master's degree after dropping out of high school. Yeah, well, I was about 30. And it was actually a, that a getting deep. It was a rebranding because everyone had just, I was in management at radio but everyone had highlighted me as oh it's the funny guy behind the microphone or well, half funny guy right. <laughs> but, but and then it was like no actually I know what I'm doing here so it was more a rebranding of hey, look what I've gone off and achieved at night right. to, yeah. to be able to have that respect in a meeting right. and yeah. rebranding is again coming back you yeah. know and that was great you know we had a student who actually worked really hard for four years got into Stanford had an idea implemented and now he's a Stanford dro dropout and the youngest billionaire in South Asia right so it's about following your dreams and taking the right decision and decision of not going to St Stanford even after receiving the offer letter was a big decision yeah. but his parents supported him at that time no, that's right? interesting I mean one way I've understood to become a billionaire is dropping out of Ivy League colleges <laughs> always work for Bill Gates Zuckerberg <laughs> there's a whole yeah. list of them isn't there <laughs> uh, Varun congratulations on all of your success Thank in you. starting up the company if you do want to go to the website unihawk.com that's right it's the best place and you can get all the details thank you very much for coming in you're on TSB Talk Sport Business